Hush by my baby, slumber time is coming soon. Rest your head upon my breast while mama hums a tune. The Sandman is calling when shadows are falling, while the soft breezes sigh as in days long gone by. Way down in Missouri where I heard this melody When I was just a little baby on my mama's knee The old folks were humming, the banjos were strumming So sweet and low hush -a by my baby, go to sleep on mama's knee Journey back to these old hills in dreams again with me. It seems like your mama was there once again. And the old folks were strumming that same old refrain. Way down in Missouri where I heard this lullaby. When the stars were blinking. And the moon was shining high, and I hear Mama calling, as in days long ago, singing hush a -bye. hush a -bye, my baby, slumber time is coming soon. Rest your head upon my breast while Mama hums a tune. The Sandman is calling when shadows are falling While the soft breezes sigh as in days long gone by Way down in Missouri where I heard this melody When I was just a little baby on my mama's knee The old folks were humming the banjos were strumming so sweet and low. hush -a by my baby, go to sleep on Mama's knee. Journey back to these old hills in dreams again with me. It seems like your Mama was there once again. And the old folks were strumming that same old refrain. Way down in Missouri where I heard this lullaby. When the stars were blinking and the moon was shining high. And I hear Mama calling as in days long ago. Singing hush -a -bye. hush -a by my baby, slumber time is coming soon. Rest your head upon my breast while Mama hums a tune. The Sandman is calling when shadows are falling, while the soft breezes sigh as in days long gone by. Way down in Missouri where I heard this melody When I was just a little baby on my mama's knee The old folks were humming, the banjos were strumming So sweet and low hush -a by my baby, go to sleep on mama's knee Journey back to these old hills in dreams again with me. It seems like your mama was there once again. And the old folks were strumming that same old refrain. Way down in Missouri where I heard this lullaby. When the stars were blinking. And the moon was shining high, and I hear Mama calling, as in days long ago, singing hush-a-bye. 
Hush a by my baby, slumber time is coming soon. Rest your head upon my breast while mama hums a tune. The sandman is calling when shadows are falling, while the soft breezes sigh as in days long gone by. Way down in Missouri where I heard this melody When I was just a little baby on my mama's knee The old folks were humming, the banjos were strumming So sweet and low hush a by my baby, go to sleep on mama's knee Journey back to these old hills in dreams again with me. It seems. I may offend some of you with my statements, but they are facts. If you are offended, I am sorry. You have no humor. For this is the Russell we knew. Everyone that knew Dad thought the Energizer Bunny would go on forever. And he may have but he just wasn't built for a sledgehammer. If not for this tragic event, who knows? Maybe he could have entertained us for another 20 years. This is the Russell we knew. What is a shame is that he was not able to jump up after this event like Mr. Magoo and look around with that silly grin, shrug his shoulders, tip his head to the side and say, no harm, no foul and then call everybody he knew to tell them about how he had screwed up. This is the Russell we knew. Speaking of talking on the phone, how many of us have experienced Dad calling, saying what he had to say, then before you could respond, he would say goodbye and just hang up? This is the Russell we knew. When he was 75 years old, Steve Banner and I hunted quail and pheasants with Dad. We did it as a tag team event. One of us has walked down the fence with him while the other one cut across, then trade off, so we walked about half of what he did. At the end of the season, Steve was wearing a knee brace, and I was on steroids for my legs. This is the Russell we knew. I had the pleasure to accompany Dad on the honor flight out of Hannibal. This experience will rest forever in my memories, as this is a grand 48 hours spent. Some may say 48 hours. Yes, I say, because these old guys wore me plumb out, and I needed sleep while they were still going strong. But boy, was I ever glad I went. This is the wrestle we knew. Dad was a tireless self-promoter who never met a stranger. Before he walked away from that person, they generally had a poem or the story of his life. This is the Russell we knew. Dad also started raising quail and got me to buy 2,000 of them. What he didn't tell me was he also talked to 10 other people in the area to raise them. Where was I going to go with all my quail? Well, he helped me sell them. Then this year, he came up with an idea to make crawdads a better bait. He called me and said to dig five ponds in a ditch on my place, and he would pay for the work. We would grow crawdads and make a million dollars. I just told him I couldn't dig them that fast. The next week, he published his recipe for the dynamite catfish bait in the Press News Journal. So much for keeping a secret. This is the Russell we knew. The whole area will miss you, Dad. You raised money for many causes. The amount I won't reveal. But trust me, it's a very large amount. Well, I saw a bottle of the Hillbilly Poet's Wine made from worm poop sell for $275 at a benefit auction. By the way, some of this wine could cause side effects. 
Most could be cured with an aspirin, but every now and again we were told it took nine months to get over it. We're going to miss you, Dad. Love you. May God bless. I don't think it'll be a problem. This is the Russell we know. Hush a bye, my baby, slumber time is coming soon. Rest your head upon my breast while Mama hums a tune. The Sandman is calling when shadows are falling, while the soft breezes sigh as in days long gone by. Way down in Missouri where I heard this melody When I was just a little baby on my mama's knee The old folks were humming, the banjos were strumming So sweet and low I won't go on to this crowd about how my daddy was a unique man. You all already know that. He taught me a lot. Isn't it amazing that in everything he did, he didn't use Twitter, Facebook, or Google? Think of what more amazing things he could have done. Believe it or not, there were things not widely publicly known about him. That he was a fisherman who was allergic to shellfish. He was highly skilled in a pair of ice skates. He could spin, jump, and skate backwards. I loved to watch him skate. He liked to watch cartoons. He took milk in a thermos in his lunch every day. He hated cats and horses. But even though he didn't like horses, he taught me how to care for and handle my ponies and horses. And I wouldn't be able to do what I do today where I work at a therapeutic riding barn every week were it not for his patience showing me when I was a very small girl how not to let my ponies buffalo me and how to brush and care for them. When I was in junior high, he was a Highland High School football booster. He let me go to the football games with him and he taught me all about the rules and strategies of football. That's probably where I became a sports, sports fan. When I was a freshman cheerleader, I was the only one on the squad who knew what a first and 10 was. Knowing my way around what was going on in football was also handy when spending time with a certain guy at a certain time in my life. Thanks, Daddy. Thank you most for being our mama's hero. Hush a bye, my baby, slumber time is coming soon. Rest your head upon my breast while Mama hums a tune. The Sandman is calling when shadow... Hello everyone, uh, this is Matt, Russell's son. And uh, we would just like to thank everyone for your thoughts, your prayers, being there for us through this time. Because without you, you know, we wouldn't be able to get through something like this. And it's people like you that are the legacy of our family, the legacy of our community, and really the legacy of, of Russell's life because you all you all participated in it. And uh, you're just wonderful, and we love you all. Uh, I'd like to share a couple of quick stories with you about Dad. Um, as you know, Dad was a very avid hunter and fisherman, outdoorsman, conservationist. And uh, one day, it was after Glenn Ross had passed away, we were in the basement. And uh, talking about something I don't remember, but Dad looked over at me and he, he said, you know, I am going to really miss that Glenn Ross. He was a, I loved him. He was a wonderful guy. He's a great friend. And damn it, I'm going to have to find me another hunting buddy. And he pulled down his glasses and he kind of chuckled. And that kind of told you where, where Russell's priorities were. Even though he was kidding, you know, he, he, uh, he really loved to hunt and fish and he loved doing it with friends and and so uh, that, that was kind of funny when he uh, when he said that about you know, finding another hunting buddy. Um, and another time, uh, I was 11 years old and I had just uh, shot my first nice buck. And uh, Dad heard me shoot. He was about 200 yards away, and he run up over the hill and he he saw me over top this buck. I was straddling it. And I had the gun right on it, and I said, "If he moves again, I'm going to shoot him." And uh, I know that. Uh, he just saw the excitement on my face, the, the, the twinkle in my eye, and it was a really great moment for us to share as a father and son um, that, that 
that moment was just great and it's something I'll never forget. Well, if you fast forward 35 years, um, we were hunting on the same Smith farm out there in Monticello and uh, I was uh, getting out of my stand. It was lunchtime and uh, I had didn't have my gun in my hands and I turned around. I heard a noise and I turned around and there was the biggest buck that I'd ever seen. He was huge. And I took a step towards my gun to pick it up and this buck just turned around and walked down the ditch. And at that time, I heard Dad pull up on the four-wheeler up at camp. And so I ran up the hill, and I told Dad, I said, Dad, drive the four-wheeler down here to the end of the ditch and just walk up that ditch. I'm going to get in my stand, and you'll run that deer right by me. And so he drove down there. I got in the stand, and it's like a 15-minute walk at the most. And uh, an hour went by. An hour and 15 minutes went by, an hour and 20 minutes went by. And so I'm hunting with an 82-year-old guy. So I was like, oh, you know, I hope he's okay. I hope this didn't happen. So I got down out of my stand, and I walked to the ditch, and I took two steps down the ditch, and I heard, kaboom! Get down here, Matt. I just killed the biggest deer you've ever seen in your life. And so I, I walked on down the ditch, and sure enough, Dad shot this deer, and it was a monster. And uh, I know the excitement on his face was the same look that he saw 35 years earlier on my face. So that was another great moment that we got to share together. And uh, it's something that I'll never forget. But, Dad, I got to say this to you. When I get to heaven, you better have a deer drive set up where you drive the monster buck to me this time so I get to shoot it. Um he was a lucky hunter. He was the luckiest guy, luckiest fisherman, luckiest guy that ever walked this earth. There's billion, been billions of people on this earth, and he was one of the greatest ever. Um, and a lot of us talk to God, but I truly think that last Monday, God actually talked to Russell. And, and I think this is what he said to him. He said, Russell, Phyllis's heart is getting ready to fail. And I'm getting ready to take her home. And he said, Russell, I'm going to give you a choice. I can take her or I can take you in her place. And I know without a shadow of a doubt and a blink of an eye and a twinkle of an eye, Dad turned around and he said, God, you take me and you take me now and you let Phyllis live so she can spend more years with her kids and her grandkids and her great grandkids. Because that's just the, the person he was. He did that so that we could have her mom here with us. And Dad, I just got to say, I love you. You are a great friend. I'm going to miss you. But now I'm going to have to find me another hunting buddy. I love you. Hush -a -bye, my baby, slumber time is coming soon. Rest your head upon my breast while Mama hums a tune. The Sandman is calling when shadows are falling, while the soft breezes sigh as in days long gone by. Way down in Missouri where I heard this melody, when I was just a little baby on my mama's knee, the old folks were humming, the banjos were strumming, so sweet and low. Hush by my baby, go to sleep on mama's knee. Journey back to these old hills in dreams again with me. When I was growing up, my brother and I spent a lot of our summer days at Grandpa and Grandma's house. We would spend as much of the day outside fishing, hunting squirrels and frogs, and helping Grandpa with all those little five and ten minute jobs, as Grandma would let us. If we weren't catching any fish, she would always tell us where we could go catch fish or what to use to catch them. And when we came back with a whole basket of fish or frogs, he would always be so excited. He never seemed upset that he would have to spend the next hour cleaning fish. He was always just so excited that we were outside enjoying nature at his house. He taught me so much about the outdoors and I look forward to being able to pass it on to my future children.
My father-in-law, Russell, passed away on 8-8 of 16. He ate and ate and never gained any weight. He loved being in the out of doors. He was always doing many chores. He liked building things out of plastic, steel, and wood. It was part of his manhood. He loved to fish and hunt, always being out in front. Russell was one of a kind and always using his mind. He wrote letters and poems. He also had a lot of rhythm. I enjoyed dancing with him on so many occasions. You could find him on the dance floor many days of the week. He also collected a lot of antiques. People knew him far and wide. You had one heck of a ride. You will be missed by many because you were the Energizer Bunny. I came into this family, not as a baby, but with a few years on me. Old enough to immediately see. Much like I am sure anybody listening to this has seen or felt the immense love the Heinzelman clan had to give. The husband, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather, which we are here to honor today. Russell Heinzelman. He, he had a rare ability to see the beauty in everything and everyone around him. And by being with him, it was easy to share in that ability. His love for his family, his community, and in nature is unparalleled. I can honestly say there's not a single picture I think of more than the one of us fishing together. I'm unsure if the woman that asked us to take that picture knew that the shutter of her camera was going to capture such an important memory for a young boy and his grandpa. But she did, but nonetheless. Don't know a single person who loved nature as much as grandpa did, and the world lost one of its greatest ambassadors to nature in him. And unless you're a deer, he will be missed by all. The only consolation I get from this is that now there's no need to go to one place to be in the presence of Russell Heinzelman. You can hear it in the song of the bluebirds he loved so much to build homes for. Taste it in a berry wine. See it in the splash of a fish as you're about to cast the line. Smell it in the woods as you walk through, chasing for a deer. And feel it in the place in your heart you keep for those you hold most dear. I love you, Grandpa. Thank you for all that you taught me. Now, let's sing, uh, can you sing Jingleheimer Schmidt again? Yeah. Okay, sing loud, okay, Emma? Sing, sing. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, he named me my name too. Whenever we go out, the people always shout, there goes John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, so la 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 la. <laughs> Good. Okay, let's see Betsy, Betsy Spider. If it is the water spout, down came the rain and it was the fire out. Down came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itty bitty spider climbed up the slider now. Okay, let's see, what next? Twinkle little star. Twinkle, twinkle little star. How I wonder where you are. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. I think he turned us off. No, he didn't. Okay, let's sing the Barney song and do the kiss again, okay? Three, two, one. I love you, you love me. We're a happy family with a great Big hug and a kiss. Me. Won't you say you love me too? Very good. Hi, my name is Emma Heinzelman, but as my grandpa Russell would always call me, his little varmint. I have a lot of memories with grandpa. He would always give me four wheeler rides, taught me how to pop corn, and took me fishing. I don't know how many times I would ask him to bait my hook. But he did it every time.
Hi, this is Dana, Matt's wife. I've known Russell for 18 short years. I don't have any neat fishing stories to tell, mainly because I don't have the patience for fishing. But I do remember him with Tyler, Sheridan, and Emma having a blast yanking fish out of those ponds left and right. It didn't matter what he was doing, if they wanted to fish, he would drop everything and head to the docks. I remember Russell and Tyler squirrel hunting, one of the things Tyler always looked forward to. Sheridan and Emma were always so proud to show him off at school on Grandparents' Day, and their classes even had him down to show the kids how to make bluebird boxes. And he was a hit. I guess most of my memories I have of Russell are him with his grandkids, and to be honest, those are the best kinds. Right after I had found out what happened, I jumped in the car with my dad to come down here and be with my family. My dad and I stayed at my grandma and grandpa's alone for the first time. When he first walked in and sat on the couch, I looked at my dad and said he was supposed to be immortal. I'm Sheridan Heinzelman and my grandpa was one of a kind. I'm glad I had such an amazing person to look up to growing up. He taught me most, if not all, I know about fishing. He went with Dad and I the first time I ever went hunting, and when I told him many years back that I had never shot a gun, he handed me his pellet gun and set up a can. He showed me how to load, aim, and shoot the first firearm I had ever shot. I didn't come back in the house until the sun went down. Now that is something I will never forget. If it wasn't for him, I don't think I would have the drive to want to fish and hunt as much as I do. Every time I came to my grandma and grandpa's, I would ask him to go fishing with me, and he did. Now I hope that I will be able to come back to my granddad's ponds and catch the fish he never got a chance to hook. As soon as I get older, I will bring my children to his ponds, and then they will bring their children, and so on. I will miss you, you crazy man. And he was able to do so many more things than I could. He was almost six times my age. Isn't that crazy? He truly was a funny, inspirational, heroic, strong man. I love you so much, Grandpa. Hush a bye, my baby, slumber time is coming soon. Rest your head upon my breast while mama hums a tune. The Sandman is calling when shadows are falling, while the soft breezes sigh as in days long gone by. Way down in Missouri where I heard this melody When I was just a little baby on my mama's knee The old folks were humming, the banjos were strumming So sweet and low hush a by my baby, go to sleep on mama's knee Journey back to these old hills in dreams again with me. It seems like your mama was there once again. And the old folks were strumming that same old refrain. Way down in Missouri where I heard this lullaby. When the stars were blinking. And the moon was shining high, and I hear Mama calling, as in days long ago, singing hush a -bye. hush a -bye, my baby, slumber time is coming soon. Rest your head upon my breast while Mama hums a tune. The Sandman is calling when shadows are falling, while the soft breezes sigh as in days long gone by. When I was asked to say a few words about my grandpa, I tried to think of an important memory we shared together. As I was sitting there thinking about it, I realized that it's almost too hard to single out just one. I mean, let's face it, he helped teach me so many life lessons from how to tie a hook on my line, how to clean a gun after a long day of hunting, how to raise quail in a garden, and most importantly, how to treat a lady. Now, one of the other lessons he tried to teach me was, was dancing. I must say that that one never took with me. 
because no one could dance like he could. But as I sit here thinking about all the great memories, the one that keeps coming to mind is when he was 82 years old. He and I went deer hunting on one cold morning. He said, just go down the fence line and wait by the big oak tree. About 20 minutes after the sun came up, I looked to my right and there was a big nine point buck walking up the fence. I shot the buck and it fell. I ran up to grandpa and told him to come see this thing. I think he was happier for me than I was at that moment. That is what I will always remember about my grandpa. He was always happy when his grandkids were having fun in the great outdoors that he loved. See you later, Grandpa.